everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I want to talk about interval training. It's been a key part of my training for really the last year and I've dabbled in it previously as well and it makes so much difference to my training and I wanted to share with you why interval training is so beneficial as well as take you along to today's interval training session which I'm going to be doing right after filming this intro. I'm pretty nervous actually, I get really nervous for all of my interval training sessions because they are just very intense but the good thing about them is they're very intense in relatively short bursts which means that I can then just at the time when I'm feeling like quite in pain, I can then have a recovery, cool myself back down and then go again. And that means that at no one point is it overwhelmingly difficult, I actually get a bit of a recovery before I get to go again. Having said that, I still get really nervous about them and the sessions are getting harder and harder and harder. So I'm having to work a little bit harder and I'm really excited to take you along with me. But first of all, I wanted to discuss why interval training is so beneficial. First of all, I'm going to explain a little bit about what interval training is and essentially it's, it's really simple. What it is, is intervals of intense activity followed by intervals of recovery. It tends to be that the intense activity is shorter than the intervals of recovery but with a lot of my sessions they're about 50-50 so we might do 30 seconds of intense activity and then 30 seconds of recovery 12 times or 20 times or whatever it is. Sometimes they can be significantly longer periods so for example today's session is five by six minutes at my 5k pace and that is going to be pretty long to be maintaining that 5k pace but then I get several minutes of recovery in between each of those efforts. Interval training effectively allows you to get all the benefits from a much longer workout in a shorter space of time. So that's easier on the body, it is better for your heart and your muscles and it also just doesn't take up as much time as if you were doing a much longer session, which we're all busy people, we know that that can be really beneficial. Interval training has also been shown to improve aerobic capacity, so that's essentially how effectively your body uses oxygen to do exercise. And that is really important if you want to do running, you need better aerobic capacity. So interval training is a great way to achieve that in a shorter space of time. It's also a really great way to practice running at race pace without actually having to do a race every single time you train. So for example, when I was training for my sub 20 minute five kilometer effort, I was having to learn what four minutes per kilometer was feeling like. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without having rest periods in between because my fitness wasn't up to the task at the time. But uh, by doing interval sessions at around four minutes per kilometer, I, I learned pretty quickly what that felt like. And also by doing sessions a little bit faster than that, four minutes per kilometer felt slightly more achievable. So by varying the paces slightly faster than race pace and around race pace, those sorts of paces start to feel more comfortable without actually putting the pressure on your body to actually do those race paces for a continuous effort uh, for a longer amount of time. Another reason to do interval training is that it keeps boredom at bay. You're unlikely to be wanting to do the same run day in day out and by including interval sessions into your training you get to mix up the, your types of runs so you can do for example what I do which is one long run a week one interval session a week and one or two recovery runs per week so the recovery runs are really slow relatively short the interval training is quite a long session very intense and then my long run is again another long session maybe two hours two and a half hours but at a very low intensity as well so so by having all those different types of run, I don't get so bored week in, week out because no two runs are exactly the same within a training block. And the final reason to do interval training is that interval training tends to use slightly different muscles to your usual runs. So when you're working harder and you're going faster, you're probably more likely to use your posterior chain. It's really important when it comes to acceleration. So that is your hamstrings, your glutes. And as people who sit down a lot, hence me here now, we tend not to use those muscles and they get really weak. By incorporating interval training, as well as things like strength and conditioning, doing squats, lunges, deadlifts, all that sort of stuff, you're more likely to get a stronger posterior chain and that's really important, especially if you want to do things like trail running, where you're gonna be doing a lot of hills. That is really tough on your posterior chain and if you have a weak one, you will feel it really quickly. It's something that I really need to work on myself, so I've been going to the gym a lot, I've been incorporating interval training every single week into my training for the last 
four weeks now and hopefully that will lead to me being stronger a stronger all-round runner but also like physically stronger which means that when it comes to my races I will be able to do better and there will be less attrition throughout the course of an ultra marathon say and I'll finish nice and strong so without further ado I'm gonna head out for my interval session today so let me just read you the session and I'll also read you my sessions up to this point so that you can see the sorts of stuff that I've been doing and maybe incorporate some of them into your training as well so this week we have five by six minutes at 4.15 per kilometer and then a three minute recovery between each of those. So 4.15 per kilometer is not actually my 5k pace, it's my threshold slash tempo pace. Obviously your paces will be slightly different to mine depending on your ability. A lot of people will be faster than me, a lot of people will be slower. Have a look at what your paces should be for these intervals. Obviously there's no one size fits all, I'm just sharing what I have. This is also the training that I did for MCC, my 40 kilometer, not technically an ultra marathon mountain race that I did in Chamonix last August. That was great fun. It was really intense. It was definitely as hard, if not harder than an ultra marathon because of the elevation gain. And I think the interval training really helped me when it came to kind of recovery on the move which is another benefit of it, and also the strength needed to climb for three, literally three hours, 17 kilometers of just going uphill. Yeah, the interval training was invaluable for that. So last week's session was a hill session. Hill sessions are a form of interval training because obviously you sprint up the hill, jog back down, that's interval. So intense uphill, recovery back down. My session was five by one minute hills with the recovery being the jog back down, then five by 45 second hills, recovery jog back down, three by 30, second hills and then one three minute hill which just felt like it went on for ever all the way up to the top and then recovery after that and that was around eight and a half kilometers of running including the warm-up and cool down um, which was slightly shorter than usual hill training is really good if you have any hills near to you because it's easier on your muscles and also the sessions can be a little bit shorter because obviously if you're going uphill it's a lot harder on the body you're probably not going to be going as fast but that's okay because you're still having to accelerate up the hill and that really uses all the same muscles that you would be going on the flat but just to a greater extent so if you don't do hill training, I would thoroughly recommend that. My session the week before was very similar to uh, today's session, except instead of five by six minutes, it was six by five minutes. That was tough enough. I really did struggle from about the third or fourth interval, I thought I'm not gonna be able to finish this. And I had a little bit of a lull in the middle, struggling with the paces and then finish strong. And that's something that I always find. I, where at the time that I feel like I can't continue any longer, I have a bit of a lull. And then I realize it's the last interval or the penultimate interval and I suddenly get some pace out of the middle of nowhere. And that's really good practice for races as well because it's gonna be tough. Obviously it's gonna be really hard, but if you can finish strong in a race, then that's a really good race strategy. You shouldn't be slowing and slowing and slowing and slowing all the way to the end. And doing interval training teaches you how to get that sort of like second or third or fourth or fifth wind towards the end of a race. And last example of an interval session, next week I have four by eight minutes at a similar pace to today with a three minute recovery in between. So you kind of get the picture. They're like extended periods of fast paced running followed by about half the time of slower uh, jog, recovery jog. If you've not been doing so much training recently, then that jog can actually be a walk. It doesn't really matter. The great thing about jogging is that it teaches you how to recover whilst you're still running. If you've not been doing loads of running recently, then sometimes that can be quite difficult. So starting off by running and then walking is a really great way to get your body used to doing intervals and doing those paces as well. So don't feel like walking is failing. It's just a different type of interval training and it's perfectly legitimate. In fact, run walk is one of the best ways to learn how to do couch to 5k, for example, or couch to 10k. My friend did a four, 350 marathon, I think it was, by doing run walk. And I think that's super impressive. That shows that actually it's a really legitimate technique to running a really long way. So that's a great place to start. So I think that's enough procrastinating for me. I think I do actually have to go on my run now. So I'm gonna bring you guys along with me. Okay, so I've just arrived at Hengrove. Um, <laughs> any of you who follow me uh, closely will recognize this place and probably be bored of it by now. I ran up here slower than usual. I can definitely feel a lot of fatigue in my legs. That would be from my 
two hour 35 run on Saturday. Um, when I was training for MCC, I would often push back my interval day by one day so that I could give it my all because running at pace was a little bit more important back then. And um, that meant that I get one more day of recovery before I do my intervals rather than running my interval sessions on fatigued legs um, because that is, well, you won't get as much out of it, but also you're at a higher risk of actually getting injured. I don't feel awful today. I feel okay um, and after two coffees I feel a little bit better than I did earlier today so we're just going to give it our best shot the paces will be difficult to hit I know that already but that's fine these things are supposed to be difficult that's how you improve so I'm going to get going in a second I've done a 15 minute warm-up um, all uphill which is how I get here and I'm going to set off now one done Whew, that was tough especially into the wind three minutes recovery and then we go again I've noticed with everything interval sessions training sessions long runs races I start to struggle like badly thinking I can't complete it around two-thirds of the way in and so that's why these sessions are so important because they teach you to maintain a pace beyond the point that you think you can um, provide you get enough recovery so with that said I'm gonna stop talking to you and start just breathing Woo, and the sun's come out so it's a good day intervals I turn the music up so loud because I feel like I can't hear it otherwise over like the pain I turn up so loud and then as soon as I slow down for the recovery I'm like whoa why is it so loud <laughs> I'm listening to Muse I always do um, it's like uh, Pavlovian response to Muse is like running fast <laughs> it's good though it's good recovery pace has slowed right down <laughs>
bloody hell. Horrible, 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 horrible. Whew. One more to go. I just realized the whole point of this vlog was to sell interval training to you guys. And all I've said so far is it's horrible. Ah, it's good really, I promise. <laughs> Bloody hell. <sighs> finish into the wind, which is the worst place to finish. So I was giving it my all. Hi, puppy. <sighs> giving it my all, but just couldn't get any pace at all. Whew. That was tough. Especially the last two, really tough. All right. 11.8k, still got the run home to do. Uh, that's including the warm up. <laughs> 72 hours recovery, I think not. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Also said I did my fastest mile, which is not actually true, but it's just since getting this watch, which was seven minutes. <laughs> now we jog back home. I always have a bit of a break afterwards. Probably part of my cool down, I should just like keep running and just recover on the move, but. Today it's not happening. <laughs> the abundance of dogs is 100% my fault. Not that I put them all here, but I do often procrastinate getting out the door, especially on days where I'm a little bit more free, which tends to be the days that I choose to do my intervals. And um, I've chosen to go at a slightly later time, which means that more people are out and about walking their dogs. So it's fully my fault. It happens every week and I know that it's gonna happen and I do absolutely nothing about it. For the run home, I'm listening to Damien Hall's book in it for the long run, which is really good. Thoroughly recommend. Okay, so this is the session. Um, this is on Strava. If you upload it as a workout, then, so you can choose the type of run if you select, wait, let me, let me show you how to do that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Choose that and then you press um, edit activity and you, go down and it says type of run and you can say workout. And if you press workout, then it saves it with all the splits that you do manually on your watch. So you go to workout analysis and then you can see, so that's warm up, uh, warm up, warm up. And then, the, okay, so the first split, six minutes, 4.17 per kilometer, 4.14 per kilometer, 4.15, 4.16, 4.17, that was me dying at the end there um, and then you can see the recovery paces go from being like 5.30 to 5.50 to 5.56 to 6.12 and then yeah eventually walking <laughs> at the end. But I'm really happy with that workout, it was 15 kilometers including the warm up and the cool down as well and I am absolutely knackered unsurprisingly and I'm gonna gorge myself on lunch. That is one thing that I find really important when you are training uh, for something, if you're including interval sessions and long runs and various other forms of training, you need to prioritize food within the 30 minutes of getting back from whatever run you were doing. That is because your muscles are pretty depleted when you're doing these sessions. And if you don't eat, then they struggle to recover as well as they could. And you need to recover quickly if you're running every day or every other day, or just generally regularly. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna eat all of the food. So that is it for this week's vlog. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I'll be back next week with another long run probably. So so watch this space. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.